Welcome, welcome. <laughs> this is definitely a first. Um, and it's going to be great. It's just going to be great. But basically what has happened is the microphone that usually we use, we have figured out has some kind of something wrong. So we've subbed out the mic um, so that we have figured out that it was the mic and we've subbed out the mic and we recognize that you all are probably gone. <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay. Today it's still November 7th. <laughs> In fact, it's only a few minutes past when we started. It's, you know, it's 8.42. It doesn't matter. But anyway, so we're going to go ahead and do the webcast and we'll run um, until I get through everything, recognizing there may not be anybody there. But if somebody finds us <laughs> and asks questions, then that will be okay too. But I actually did have some questions, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, because one of the questions is from a lady in Norway and as she asked the question it, it's difficult to sometimes in an email explain some of this stuff and so as I thought today about how I could explain it and what would keep it simple there's really um, three basic steps so the first problem is and I've had it in workshops I have it in seminars I don't know that I've ever really approached it full on right on and I think I've been a little bit afraid to because it's not hard but it's not you know it's three steps all right so the problem exists and generally it's I'm using this as my little uh, mannequin is in and it's in a very large busted woman it's usually a large busted woman who has very small shoulders and a very narrow rib cage you know really large bust if you understand what I'm saying. And I know a lot of you say, that's me, that's me. No, it's not. It's, it's really large bust. Okay, so the gapping occurs at the armhole. And even though you increase the dart, and even though you fix the shoulder seam, there's still gapping that occurs right at the notch of the armhole. All right. So the, the thing you should do is you should put on the, the garment, and you, you want to come right to the armhole and pinch out that amount. It, believe it or not, it's usually about two inches, and I, know, I can't believe I've done this so many times, but it's usually an inch on each side of the pin, so I'm going to put a pin in the middle, that's not relevant. But what is relevant is the, to mark the two sides. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it off, that dart that you're making, you don't want to leave that in the final garment because nobody wants a dart from their armhole in the final garment. It also distorts the armhole, and we're going to actually take that away and then we're going to draw the armhole back all right so let me keep going so I'm going to take a dart into the armhole and the dart will always point to the bus point the whole reason it's happening is because of the bus point so I'm going to make a cut in the pattern up from the bottom to the bus point from the armhole to the bus point that's step number one step number two is I'm going to close up the armhole amount. That was not supposed to happen. I'm going to close up the armhole amount. Now, that's where it's important to those two inches, is that the two, the whole two inches, like I would mark either one side or another. Don't mark the middle, because if you mark the middle, you won't be able to tell when the two sides have reached one another. So I would cut along the top or the bottom, I don't care which. And then of course, to close up that dart completely, you want to bring the top mark to the bottom mark to get that whole amount closed. Just be careful not to only close it halfway, it would be to go to the middle. And once you close it halfway, what you'll see is that the cut that you had in the bottom will be large because this it, closing one will open another. All right. Your option then is to leave that as is. You could leave that big old thing hanging down there, but you know, it'd be a lot extra. If your hips are larger and you need that, you could leave it and let it let it go. But what I'm going to tell you to do is to measure how much larger it made the bottom and to take off the side, to take an angled seam off the side, the same amount as what you added. So basically you're just changing the angles of this whole entire pattern piece. So number one, I cut, cut, close, open, re-angle the side seam. It really is that easy if you do it 
you'll see just follow those exact steps you'll see oh my gosh and then you can use it as a template now as far as making the armhole smaller um, if I'm if I closed it two inches per se then I'm going to take half of that which is one inch and drop the armhole down one inch in the front and one inch in the back that will restore the armhole to the same size but the front armhole will still be smaller than the back and I'll have to do the same to the sleeve okay just an FYI okay so that was one thing I wanted to go over and again um, Toral in Norway hello I hope that helps you it, it will just go through the process and if you guys have questions let me know okay then also I had an email on this and I wanted to kind of share it. It was about leggings. Of course, we did a little leggings tutorial a little while ago, um, or a couple weeks, whatever it was. Here's our little leggings that we did. They're adorable. And so one of the comments I got back is that if you move the side seam of the legging, she took our leggings pattern, which is 5019 Angel's Legging, she took the side seam and she moved it to the back. So right down the bum, you know, both side seams to the back. And her comment was it made her look thinner. Um, any vertical seam will make you look thinner, whether it's stitched or whatever it is. Any vertical seam will make you look thinner. So the only reason I wanted to comment on this is because if you, you don't have to move the seam. That's really a lot more work, and it takes up a lot more fabric unless you just wanted that look. But if you leave it at the side seam and then add one at center back, that even will make you look even more thinner. So, you know, someone said to me, well, can I just keep adding verticals? No, 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 enough's enough. But you can leave it at the side and then add one. If you take it away from the side, recognize you're going to take up more fabric because that one piece is quite a bit larger. Okay? Um, also, the other thing she did, and, you know, this is always sensitive materials here, is she put a gusset in the crotch and she said that um, keeps it from being female unattractive. You know, it really doesn't. If a pant is too short, a pant is too short. It doesn't matter what you do, the pant isn't going to not be too short. It, it might look a little better, whatever, but it's still going to be too short. So if you like a gusset, and again, we talked about this years, I don't know if it was years ago, but in a different webcast, what the gusset does is it actually, when you're riding a bike or when you are um, doing certain exercises that are seated, I think a bike is the best example. It is less, um, for the seam not to be in the center, it makes more sense because when the bike seat is meeting the seam, that's going to be a little more irritable than if it's on a solid piece of fabric. So the crotch helps for that reason, um, but it, it doesn't help for shortness. I mean, just, and I, I love what you say and I want your ideas, but I don't want you to think it helps. A gusset would help a length issue. It doesn't, okay, just to make sure. So add those verticals and get a gusset if you're riding bikes, all right? We have questions, we have people. Oh my gosh, hi everybody. <laughs> Will the LED light strips work for a serger with the extra vibrations? It does. The um, the adhesion on that LED light is incredible. It really is incredible. I've got it on my machine now. I've got it on my serger as well because I didn't buy the real high-end serger with all the lights. Um, it's absolutely fabulous. And the thing about it is, is you can kind of position it anywhere you want. You can just go right back and forth. It's fabulous. It does not and won't vibrate off. So you're in good shape. All right, we have people. Oh my gosh, ladies. Hi, how are you? I have to say ladies and gentlemen, I typically have to correct the 3 8 inch on the shoulder slope seam on silhouette patterns. Should I correct it on 350 and if yes, how? Thank you, Peggy. Yeah, 350 is the same. 350 is Stephanie's blouse and it has a kimono sleeve is what she's referring to or even a raglan, it wouldn't make a difference. Um, if you don't correct it, whenever you have a raglan or a kimono or anything that's um, it's sloped. If you look at the slope of the shoulder and if it doesn't meet your shoulder, all that extra will hang down underneath the armhole and the bust. Not an attractive look. So literally just um, take it away. Just You can either pivot the shoulder down, you could you know kind of take it from this point, or you can just draw it. 
and you can draw the whole thing lower. So wherever this point is, draw it lower, draw the whole entire thing at a greater angle is what you're doing. So it's very simple to do. Just think that the whole thing's going lower. And even if you didn't do this end, even if you only did this portion down here, whatever you take away here, add to the bottom. And then basically what you're doing is you're tilting the whole thing at an angle that's below the armhole. Okay? All right. All right, everybody, you found us. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> it's great to be here. All right, so tonight what we want to talk about, and, you know, again, because tonight has been kind of a little out of order, we'll say, um, I'm just going to go ahead with the with what I had prepared and pre presented, and then if we have questions as we go through, then we'll just interrupt wherever I'm at, and we'll just ask those questions, and, and it'll work that way. And the funny thing is, <laughs> you guys normally because my mic is on my mouth, everybody in the room can talk and talk to each other and tell each other what's happening or what's going on. <laughs> but because the mic we're using picks up every noise, everybody's like church mice back there and they're making motions and hand motions because nobody can talk because they'll be on the mic. <laughs> the mic is picking up the whole room is what's happening. Um, the two inch elastic on my yoga pants folds over when I'm wearing them. Do you have any idea what the problem may be? Yes. Um, the goal of the yoga pant is it should not be at my waist. It should be below my waist. So because my waist is what bends when I bend over, if the yoga pant is too high on my body, it will bend. So it shouldn't be that high. If you just really want it that high, then you can't stop it from bending over. But the other thing you could do is don't make it so tight. If it's too tight, it will bend. If it's too high, it will bend. It'll be one of those two things. Again, the yoga pant was be meant to be worn high on the hip um, or low on the waist, however you want to say it. And with that situation, there should be no bending going on. So it's either too high on your body. And you know, it's a better look. I, I tell women all the time, lower your pants, lower your pants. Don't wear them that high. And you know, it's the first time they hear it. And it takes them a little while. But I get a lot of emails saying, you were right, you know, it looks better. I don't look like an old grandma anymore. <laughs> Probably we still look like old grandmas, but you know, it's better to have it a little bit lower. All right? All right. Um, so the pattern of the month is 83. And the reason I did this pattern of the month for 83 is if you've noticed, if you've been watching the um, Let's Sew, all the little things we've been doing, we've kind of been culminating up to what is the biggest thing for this fall season, which is wraps. Wraps are just everywhere. So. It makes sense to have pattern number 83 as the pattern of the month for November, and I did it purposely. So you guys, please, if you don't do anything else this season, make yourself a wrap for the holidays. Or make yourself somebody else. If you can't sew, you don't have to sew to make this wrap. It's really, it's that easy. This is number 83. And I'm going to show you several things. This is the wrap itself. Uh, I'm going to put it on here in a minute. I'm going to close up the zipper. I'll show you how to do all this. I have done and showed you this before. It is the best trick in the book. This original wrap was done Ellie Tahari. It was only $500 and I absolutely think it's the prize of my wardrobe. Alright, so basically the pattern shows you how to do it, how to wear it, how to do everything you need to do. There's only one seam that's sewn. And our pattern, the pattern 83, is going to be the same as two of the other Let's Sew additions that we've done. One was the French wrap and one was the asymmetric wrap. And then I showed the French wrap how to sew it a different way and wear it a different way. But all of those measurements, all of those things are right with 83. It's the same thing. 83's got a few differences because of the armholes and how it's sewn and how it's finished. But all of these wraps are really along the same page. They're just sewn differently. So this one is the pattern of the month, 83. I'm going to turn around so you can see. That, there is one seam that goes through the center back. And it connects the two armholes. On the pattern there's some little jaunts because it's where the armhole is separated from the rest of it. So when I take this off, it's funny because I still think I have a mic on and I don't have a mic on. But anyway, this is where you're going to put a separating zipper. And so like an 18 inch separating zipper is perfect back here, armhole here, armhole here. 
when I undo this, then it completely opens this up to a what can be worn now as a scarf because it opens it up to just a big circle. But the coolest thing is, is if I do it the different ways that I've shown you, I can take the same pattern and do both the French wrap and the asymmetric wrap. And so I really wanted you to see that these wraps are just stylish and they're just all over the place. That little zipper in the back, first off, not only is it trendy because so many things have zippers in them today, but of course it makes it just terribly versatile. So that's what we want you to have, is we want you to have the most versatile wardrobe possible, which is what's going to lead us into the rest of the things that we're going to talk about tonight, which is rebuilding our wardrobe. All right, question is, for Colette's wrap, will you show more about adding the zipper? Also, the pattern shows the zipper part hangs down low in the back. Is that right? Mine was looking good until I added the zipper. <laughs> no, the zipper part, okay, let me go, yes, I can go through it. Um, when you are adding the zipper, what I did is the zipper is in, you only have uh, one lengthwise seam. Oops, this goes down here. You have one lengthwise seam, that's the best way I know how to say it. All right, this portion here is cut on the fold. This portion here is got a seam. That seam is not where you put the zipper. That's I'm going to call that the vertical seam. You're going to put it in the horizontal seam. And you can see that there's an armhole here and an armhole here. So it's going to go in that seam. All right, so normally there would be a seam from here to here. So instead of sewing that seam, I just turned the seam allowance under and top stitched a zipper right onto it. That seam right there is what goes to the bottom. So when you go to put it on, that goes to the bottom. These go through your armholes. And there you have it. And let me tell you something, I was in Portland last weekend and I could have I would have died to have this wrap with me. Can you believe I did not take this wrap with me? Big mistake because it was raining Saturday. After the workshop was over, my sons were with me. My one son lives in Portland. So we go out, it's raining. We walk out of one place, one restaurant anyway. My first son pops up his hood. Second son pops up his hood. Third son pops up his hood. Do I have a hood? No, but guess what? If I would have had this wrap, it would have been perfect. I would have had a hood. So I'm not going anywhere else this fall, this winter, whatever, without a little hood because it's perfect for anything I want to go and it becomes my hood. So I would have been dried. I was soaked. My hair was soaked. I was soaked. Everybody else was dry. All right, so there you have it where the zipper goes horizontal, not the vertical seam. There's one vertical seam. It doesn't go in there. All right, easy enough? You got it. All right, I love it. It's the coolest trick in the book. And Ellie Tahari, $500. Because you can't mess this up, you can't not make it fit, you can't do any of that, Use a little nicer fabric. We've got some beautiful mohair. We've got some beautiful fabrics. You know, inch up a little bit with your fabrics, and, and I'll, I, I know you'll find you just absolutely love it. If you want big buttons, yes, yeah, same thing. Snaps, buttons, all those things. I just have to add a button top, yes. If yes, you can tell us what size regarding the button diameter. I would, what I would do is I would use snaps, number one, and then I would just sew the buttons to be decorative. So I would use nice big one inch ones and do like five, do an uneven number, don't do an even number, do an uneven number, one in the center, two at the ends, two in the middle, do those big nice snaps and then um, do the decorative buttons on top, it would be adorable and that way it would just snap apart. So a buttonhole in a, in a knit, in a loose knit, you know, I don't know that you want to go there, but you can, I mean you can if you want to. But I would do nice big one inch buttons. And especially too when you were draping it around your neck, you could position those buttons to where they were showing and the snaps were not. So it'd be fun to just kind of position that either way. Okay, so lots of endless ideas, you guys. You all know that. Now keep in mind, this was also the wrap that I did a couple weeks ago and I had it on for the webcast. I wanted to show it again because again, Miss Fabric. So this is the same diameter, it's the same 
you know, it's the same. If I hold these two up, you see they're the same size, they're just sewn differently. So go back to that asymmetric wrap, see how it's sewn, and there you have it. It's like the same exact pieces, they're just sewn differently. And that's where I wanted you to see where this one, same thing. The French wrap, just sewn differently. Same exact measurements. The asymmetric wrap here, same thing, just sewn differently. So it's amazing to me how many of these wraps are out here this fall, and yet they're all just a little twist up on the other one. But again, regardless of your sewing skills, you guys, if you're afraid of a machine, if you've never sewn before, you can do this. You really, you can really do this. Don't even try to make it versatile. Just make one to where um, you start with a beautiful piece of fabric that you just love and make it yours. It's great. So what I did is in making my wardrobe, okay, so here's what we're doing. We're going down back to 25 pieces. It's fall, it's season, it's a new season. Our wardrobes are jam stuff full. We've got way too much. Pull out 25 pieces. So what I've done is I've taken the 25 pieces that we've made over the last few webcasts, and that actually was becoming my 25. So I was purposely picking fabric that worked with all, everything else I was wearing so that I would end up with my 25. So now I'm at my 25. So if you go back over the last two months, all of those garments are here tonight, and that's what makes our 25. This is just really cool. Plus, everything's current, everything's fresh, and I'm going to show you how things kind of combine together. So, on your 25 pieces, the breakout is we're going to do, we're going to put the most into tops, because simply, tops are the most versatile. And anyone knows, I, I was in retail um, way before, well, when I graduated from college, I was a fashion, merchandising, fashion, um, design major. So I first went into merchandising and 75% of the department or any store is tops. Obviously because of that's what sells. When a woman um, wants to get a new outfit, if she doesn't have a lot of money, if she's making an outfit, if she doesn't have a lot of money, she's going to make a new top because a new top is what's going to make it look new. She can wear it with the same pants. So in this breakout of 25 pieces, I'm going to kind of give you a breakout, and this is generally how the stores will do it. You'll see the numbers pretty repeatedly. Feel free to change it if your lifestyle, if it doesn't work, you know, whatever, whatever, but here's how it goes. So for my 25 pieces, I'm going to have 11 tops. Now, that is just vests, blouses, it, tops, period. I did one blouse, though. I kept that separate. So actually that gave me a total of 12. You can break it out however you want. I had three jackets. I had three capes because I feel like these capes or these wraps or whatever you want to call them, they're really an outfit. If I decided to wear this out, you know, I would wear it out. It, it would really be my outfit. So it really wouldn't really matter what I had on underneath it. It really works well as a great outfit. And it's... <laughs> I told somebody a little a while ago, if you use two yards of fabric, and if you decide you don't like the wrap anymore, you just undo the seam, and you can cut something else out of it. <laughs> so it's not like you're even committed. It's like living together. You're not even committed to the person. All you got to do is undo the seam and make it into something else. So hopefully that'll really sell you on it. And it'll sell you on us using up some of that fabric in your stash. So I have three capes. I had two skirts, and I'll explain why and then I have five pants and my pants as I go through them are going to be my yoga pants are going to be my jeans they're going to be my leggings I also did a pair of uh, dress black slacks and oh I did a wild pair of yoga pants okay <laughs> all right so if we're good with those I want to go through the detailing on each of these and show you where I'm at so my black leggings you know we made those and I added a little sparkle to my black leggings because I could and it was fun. And anything I'm going to wear with them, um, the, the sparkle really wouldn't show. It wouldn't be a big deal unless somebody saw it. You remember my yoga pants, my wild yoga pants? I really wanted to have those. And what I did is I made a jacket that went with it. So I could wear it with that or I could wear it with my solid black top. Um, this solid black top is Terry's top, it's 313, 
and it's out of a wool mohair. It's a solid black with this. I can do all kinds of belts with it, or I can go ahead and wear it with this little jacket. This little jacket was Becky's jacket. You remember we put a little black lace down the back. Love this jacket. I've worn it several times, and I really like it. Come from a couple webcasts ago. Now, also what we did, just so that you would have it all in, after tonight, you know, we always put all the fabrics up and all the patterns. We put all the patterns and all the fabrics so they'd have quick links. Even if some of the fabrics, I think we have most of them, but if some were sold out, we still put them up just so you could kind of see the type of fabric we used so you'd get an idea as to why and what we did it. All right, these were Jags. Um, they're a black twill. They're heavy enough for Texas, for me. They'll go well into December. These I had washed in Coca-Cola and I absolutely love them. They're a great basic black. Um, these are my jeans and I've had those and I brought them forward. So I didn't try to replace everything, I brought my favorites forward. Let me just tell you something about doing this. Your, your wardrobe gets better and be excuse that you guys, it's just a, um, a flood, an emergency flood warning. <laughs> I mentioned earlier that we, before when we had the first go around, that we have um, really heavy rains and we're having flash flood warnings. We are fine where we are. I don't want you to think you guys were flooding out the world and we're still doing a webcast. We are fine, but the emergency still comes through. So excuse that beeping. Um, the, good, the, the coolest thing about doing this 25, you guys, is every time I go through a wardrobe and discard or decide I don't want that or et cetera, et cetera, I make my selections better and better and better. And the whole level of my wardrobe increases. It just gets better and better and better. My selection gets better. My taste of fabric and pattern gets better. I like the clothes better. I'm more particular about what I make. I just really feel myself liking this group better than I have any other group. I know that's probably crazy, but I just really, really like it. So I attribute it to the fact that I'm just getting more particular and da da da, da. Anyway, okay, so then I'm gonna go to my skirts, and I had two skirts. I did 29.13, I don't know, y'all know, I love, absolutely love, we have a new denim in that's this denim, I'll get it up before tomorrow. Um, love this denim, it's really soft, it's really drapey, coca cola -ed three times coca cola okay? And the reason I did it is because I bought, I top stitched this like in a neutral, and I have a pair of like brown boots, and I really wanted a casual, um, chill out look where I could wear a skirt, tights, boots, and just throw on a sweater with it. So this was the sweater we remade. This is just a, a great outfit and really easy and really casual. There's so many combinations here, I just won't even go through them all. And then the other skirt was the yoga skirt that I did. Um, it's got, it's black, it's got slits up the side, and again, just so many uses for that. Um, also, again, I could wear it with flats if I just want to be casual, or I could put on a little boot and kind of dress it up a little bit. So those are my pants and those are my skirts. That's my thinking, you saw my capes. My tops, um, I did the remake, I did my sweater. I did this sweater, so I have a silk sweater from Saks. <laughs> Not really, but um, I love both of these sweaters. It's amazing. I mean, I've gotten so many comments on that, you guys. It's really fun to see all the ideas. I, and I really encourage you to share on Facebook or read the comments below our YouTubes because there's uh, so many people have so many other better ideas and they just keep layering the ideas on top of ideas. So that's kind of fun to see. And then this was my blouse. You remember, this is a, just a beautiful blouse. I have many options to wear this with. Um, because it's winter time, I can put a little camisole underneath it just to kind of keep me warmer, but it is a cotton, so it's a beautiful fabric. Um, I had a lot of questions on this. This is pattern number 300, but I used the sleeve from the jean jacket, Carol's jacket, number 900. So it has a cuffed sleeve on it. That's because it's the cuff of Carol's jacket. So it looks very much like a very traditional blouse with a cuff the whole nine yards because I just took a cuff from another pattern and put that in. Anne's top, love this, just absolutely love this. 
I had a lady a little while ago said she'd never made Anne's top. I went, oh, really? You know, oh, how could you? But anyway, um, great, great neckline. Easy to make, you guys. These are, these are wardrobes that all of you can do. None of this is difficult sewing. The sweater set's been used over and over. I can't imagine a single customer out there that doesn't have our sweater set, pattern number 195. If you don't have it, you, please, for your sake, not for mine, get it. All right, this was um, 1825 called Zoanne's Cape. This is this beautiful embroidered knit. What I had done with this is I put the selvage underneath the neckline. It's just beautiful. It's just really beautiful. I've worn this several times. The compliments are just nonstop. Um, I did not want it. It is. A, I put it under my jackets, even though it's not a jacket. What I did is I took the sweater set sleeve, the 195, my knit sleeve. I put my knit armhole on here. So this really works out to be a sweater. Because just of its nature, I wear a little camisole under it. It's absolutely beautiful. It's just so pretty. And then it, it can easily be worn with skirt or pants. Works either way. All right, how are we doing? We got a question on the POM. Okay, POM. I'm wondering if the pattern is too slouchy to look good on a fuller figure. I look slimmer in something more form-fitting and the POM looks pretty droopy. Any opinions for a fuller figure? I do. You guys, I promise I would not put a pattern out there that did not look good on all of you. What you want to do is underneath, be sure and, and silhouette the body. You don't want to do um, the wrap with, you know, something that's not fitted underneath. So it's important that you shape what's underneath appropriately and then put the wrap on top because even though the wrap is kind of fluffy, what's underneath will still show that it's not a heavy body, it's shaped. So don't layer no fit on top of no fit, put no fit on top of fit. And the wrap is a no fit, make sure it goes on top of fit. Great question, I appreciate you asking. Okay, all right, so then we have, remember we had our black, I'm sorry, our brown t-shirt that was cut in the back, love it, love it, love it. We did a little vest for it. Uh, obviously this is gonna go great with my brown boots, can't wait. I have not worn it, I can't wait to wear it. It's got a black in it, the stripe is amazing because it's got all the different colors in it. So if I wanted to take this off of here and decide to wear it with my beige sweater that I made, sweater, I don't think that's the word, sweater, you know, I certainly can. And it gives me a whole different look because obviously here I could pair it with jeans um, and just really changes the styling out completely. So really fun look and again changes it up. And again because I picked these combinations like kind of I grouped them together and you guys know it generally when I think about sewing you want to think about more than just one item. It was really fun to group them together because there's just they're so versatile. Um, as I went to Portland last weekend, this weekend I'm going to New York, I find that I can literally just take a carry-on now because my clothes are much more efficient and things work, but yet they transfer into something else, you know, that I just don't need that much, but it goes a lot farther. This I showed you a little earlier. This is Terry's top. I love this. Um, and this is the mohair. This is black mohair, but then here's the little capelet over it. And so you can see really nice. And again, this is a perfect example. So that this is loose, what I want to do underneath is put a great belt. I'm going to put on... Um, this belt right here, not that you would wear this belt, but just so you can see the difference. And, and just keep this in mind, just don't wear loose loose with loose loose. Alright, so there you go. You can see that the belt underneath looks, gives it the shape so that the, you can really see the figure. What you want to do, and I've said this to so many women, right underneath our bust is the hollows, and it's probably one of the smallest parts of our body. Don't let a garment hang from the bust. I've said it so many times, Dolly Parton and Amumu, don't do that. Come in right under the bust, and then go down. And even if it's, even if, it, if you've got a tummy, come in right under the bust with a button, something that separates the bust from the rest of the body, and then the wrap can be on top. And it's just a really pretty look. Um, this was our velvet cape. Velvet is just all over the place. I mean, everywhere. They're velvet leggings. They're velvet everything. And it's stretch velvet. So this is really beautiful. This was 75 Phillips cape. And then it went over our, 
our top and that's 400 and we just added a collar to that one is what we did and then you guys I made up these crazy leggings because print leggings are so popular and I just had to have a pair of crazy leggings so underneath this now we're, we're not going to wear this anymore we're going to wear what's under it and this is my 216 my asymmetric top it's brand new for spring for fall it's one of our fall patterns and I picked a really crazy print because I wanted the asymmetric to go with something wild. And so there's the print and there's, and you can see it's really definitely a wild look, but it really gives me this very traditional, classy, dressy look into something really funky. <laughs> so these printed leggings, I can't wait to wear. I decided I wouldn't wear them until I had the webcast, but they are a jewel, you know, come on, really, like no time to make. I don't think you have to sew to make these either. They're really quick. Pattern 5019, I love it, love it, love it. And because they're wild, you want to tame them, you know, obviously tame them down with a top. Um, and then so, because again, I wanted a blouse. I actually did two blouses. I said I did one, but I did two. I want you to see this. It's absolutely beautiful. This is a great idea. We have a little pattern set. And the pattern set is the one I have on, 110, and then 400 and 2913 the skirt and the reason I did those together is because they're all um, they were great companion pieces to finish out what I needed my wardrobe to feel like it was everything I needed it to be so this top in particular is a great t-shirt I did it longer than the pattern and then the other thing I did and I'm not sure if you can see it but it's a border print this is a border print so I put the little O's in the sleeve and I put the bigger O's on the body. So it really gives a very slimming look as opposed to doing it any other way. And I just literally laid the sleeve pattern right on the, the border from small O's to big O's. And so it literally looks like there's a seam going up my sleeve. I know you can't see this in real person, but it, I just absolutely love this. Lowered the neckline a little, did a little fold over elastic. It's perfect. And because we're, the one, one reason I did it long sleeve is because we're using a lot of spring colors going through the fall season, and I really like it. So to have a little touch of green, a little touch of white, a little bit of black goes perfect. And again, you can throw it on. I can put a black wrap over it to just warm it up a little bit. This one right here, of course, I can't do without my three-way Cardi, my four-way Cardi. This is another thing I could put on over what I have here and really make that work. And people have asked me a lot when they're doing this, how, what, how do they deal with the lengths? You really shouldn't even have to deal with the lengths because your all your top should be proportioned to you. So if this is going below your rear end and it's right below your rear end and this is coming to your waist and then you're wearing it open, let everything be at the length it is and it will be perfect, it will be the right length for you. So you don't really have to even think it through or worry about it, it'll just happen. If I decide to tie this and, and ditch the belt underneath, I can do that and it's still a great look. All right, but what I did this for, and I did this in black rayon, and the reason I included this into my 25 is because it feels like I wear it <laughs> every day. I know I don't, but it just feels like I wear it all the time. So it's hard to leave home without it. <laughs> Um, so all of your jackets are gone, including the leather ones. No. 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 They're in my 25 pieces. Let's see. Did I? 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 25. I have 27. <laughs> I have two more. No, I can't get rid of my leather jackets. Are you kidding? Um, but I have a functional travel wardrobe. And then I have another wardrobe. <laughs> Which patterns would you recommend just starting with your patterns to kick off a base wardrobe? If you go to our website, the very front, the very middle column, the very front page of the website, very middle column, it'll say starter pack. Click on that and you can at least see what we recommend uh, as a beginning. It's like the yoga pant, the sweater set, the classic blouse, those type things. Okay. All right, so this is a blouse, and I absolutely love this idea. I want to tell you this idea because you can use it for so many things. I was at Neiman's trying on different clothes, looking at different clothes. And when you have a blouse or a tank top, 
So this is pattern number 400. It's done out of this incredibly beautiful silk. This is called the dual border silk. I mean, it's really beautiful. Not only that, it feels great on. But anyway, when you are dealing with a, um, a shell, so 400, pattern number 400 is called traditional blouse. And it has three different views. It has, um, but anyway, one of the views, the reason I concluded it, it was from Donna Karen. It was Donna Karen's most classic looks. It was a little woven shell that you could pull over your head. Okay, so it had a little slit in the back, which this has, it has a little slit in the back, um, and a little snap, and you can pull it over your head, and I did a little v-neck. But when you pull something over your head, the waist has to be at least the size of the bust or your shoulders, otherwise you can't get it off, and a lot of manufacturers will put a little zipper in the side so that once you put it on, it won't look like a pillowcase. We don't want to look like decorated pillowcases. That is not the goal. So, a lot of times, like, ladies in class will come in with a tank top, and they want me to drape a tank top on them. And I'll drape, drape the tank top, but I'll say to them, you're not going to be able to get this off um, unless you put a zipper in the side. Because once this is fitted in the front, once I do darts in the back, even if it's not tight, you can't get the waist over the bust unless that invisible zipper is there, and the visible zipper expands the waist and you can get it off. Okay, so new idea to contrast that. I saw it in Neiman's, loved it, fell in love with it, and I love this on. So what they did is, remember darts are four inches from center front, front and back, or four inches from center back. So I'm going to turn this sideways so that you can see. What they did is they took a piece of elastic, and they went from the back to the front, and they sewed that elastic into the blouse. So once you put it on, you get this beautiful shaping, but you can get it off because the elastic expands. So I had to pass this idea along. Love this idea. Love this blouse on. You put it on. It's absolutely beautiful. I did it sleeveless. I did it long. I did slits to the side. Let's go back. Because I wanted it to be like a tunic. So we'll wear it with black leggings. Um, open at the side, a little wrap over it. It's just a really perfect, perfect little winter outfit. It's lightweight, silk, it's beautiful. Just really, really beautiful. So I wanted to suggest that to you. We've got some really beautiful silks. This one in particular is a dual border. You can see that the border, I actually flipped it up the other way so that it's going this way. But when you're dealing with wovens, it doesn't make a difference. You can turn it any which way you want. Anyway, very pretty. And then a question. What type of fabric do you recommend for Colette's wrap? Is the blue wrap you're demonstrating a knit? Yes. Yes, I, you can do Colette's wrap in a woven, but I, I mean, you can do it, but you need a much larger size. So this is a knit. I like it best in a knit. The original was a knit. Yeah, I like it in a knit. You can do it in a woven, like I said, but um, if you're going to do it in a woven, make it go to a larger size than what you think you would use so that it, it gives you mobility, because otherwise it can be a little binding on your arms. Okay? All right, and then our last one is our little ladder sleeve. And we all saw this just the other day. We just put it out. Just way too cute. And so there we have it. And of course, because this has numerous different colors in, I could tie it in with beige, black, browns. It doesn't make a difference. So I have my new 25. I'm excited to have my new 25, only because I love my new 225. And you don't have to get rid of the previous 25. <laughs> All right, um, maybe that's 25 per closet. Good one, good one. And you know how many closets I have in this house? I have one, two, three, four, five, ooh, six closets. <laughs> That's about right. <laughs> Six times 25, that's about right. Um, until tomorrow, because I, I have to make up some new things tomorrow. But you all get the idea. You won't take me literally. You won't really hold me to 25, will you? But again, the more we make, the better it gets, and the better we get, and the better they look. And you all know I love clothes. I figured out the other day, I told the ladies in Portland, I figured out something. I figured out that I absolutely love fabric. I love fabric, and I love clothes. <laughs> when I was a little kid, I remember thinking, 
I'll never have enough clothes. And I've actually had to revisit that thought <laughs> and wonder if that's probably not true at this point. <laughs> but I will tell you that I never don't know, don't have the appropriate thing to wear. That's kind of fun. All right, let's finish up with questions. On the 400 top, did you add width and or length? On the 400 top, I added, I added just a little bit of width because it already goes out larger through the hips and so you don't need to add that much. And remember on this, I decided I would make it like a tunic. So right below the waist, I split it and I think it looks a little better if the splits open a little bit, not like tight, but I, I did add the length. I think I only added like three inches, not a lot. Um, but I really liked the, like I said, I wanted a more tunic look. As I looked around all the trends of all the seasons, there's so many good ones in here. Is the lattice sold as a notion on the website? Well, what this lattice is, if you haven't watched the, um, this is the fold over elastic. So yes, it's on the notions. The fold over elastic is, um, so that's all that is. It's just split. We showed you how to do it on the ladder sleeve. I think the ladder sleeve was last, what's today, Monday? It was last Thursday. Yeah, it was last Thursday. Anyway, so yes, the fold over elastic is available on the Notion page. I can't believe this worked out, you guys. And I know there's a lot of people who are probably didn't make it back, and that's okay. But I really appreciate the guys back there who really stuck through because I said, well, you guys, hey, we'll do it next week. It's okay. And they kept, they kept pushing. So we appreciate that, even though they're all giggling and quiet back there. Um, I like your idea to place elastic at the sides of the waist, which will solve my problem with a laced top lined with the thin knit fabrics. Appreciate. You guys, you're welcome. I'm telling you, they are amazing. When I'm shopping, there's so many things I'm looking for. Just the way they construct, um, uh, what darts are turned into. You know, there's so many ideas out there that I, <laughs> I think that's why I really enjoy um, doing the the Thursdays or whatever is just to pass those ideas along. There's so many great ideas and you know I'm just grateful for all those stores and all those designers who just work their little heads to death so that I can come along in a minute and just say hey man that's awesome and all I did was cut a piece of elastic and mine is um, because it was four inches here and four inches here I think mine was like ten inches long because I, and, and it'll depend on how tight you want it to come in, but when it's on, I was going to wear it tonight, but I opted for this, but when it's on, I mean, it's just beautiful how it just silhouettes the body. It's very, very pretty. Very pretty. So I know you'll like that idea, you guys. All right. Are we good? All right. Hear ye, hear ye. We done did it. All right, so we want to say thank you. We're going to be back in two weeks. We will have holiday dressing, is what we're going to talk about when we come back next time. I'll have lots of fun ideas for you out of the base of the pattern, so we can really um, do a few little changes here, changes there, and get what we want for the holidays. And we'll have it in time for the holidays, too. All right, so we do have a couple more questions we'll finish up with. What pattern would you recommend that can be turned into pattern 311 Victoria's Top, which is now discontinued? Go to 915 Hugo's Cardigan, and you will see they're almost, almost identical. Not, that's not true, but they're pretty close. 915 is a, a little more updated version than what the 311 was, and so that's why um, we, we didn't really need to reprint that 311. 915 is perfect. Okay? Could you carry the hardware for the trench coat, please? I have a hard time finding the right hook and eye and buckles. I have to go, go to New York on Thursday, and I will absolutely look into that. I, I will. Um, we have a workshop up there in New York. If you guys are around the New York area and want to ch want to still join in, I st think there's still a couple spots available. But I will. So the hook and eye and the trend, yes, I will look for that. Promise, promise. All right. All right, so then we will say good night. We will see you in two weeks, which is going to be, I shouldn't have done this. It takes way higher math, but I think it's the 21st. Um, and we'll see you in a couple weeks. All right, happy sewing from Silhouette Patterns. Good night, everybody.